Welcome to Cannon Fodder, a behind the scenes look at the Glass Cannon Network. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen of the niche? Welcome back to Cannon Fodder Friday. It's Friday, May 14th, 2021, and it is, it's a big week. Returning to the FOD for the second week in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, my old buddy, Troy LaValle, in the house. Old two-week Troy is what they used to call me. Yep, they used to call you that. Remember when you used to do FODs back-to-back? That used to happen a lot, actually. Oh, that was the worst. (laughs) Come on, those were the best days. (laughs) The halcyon days of the network. Oh, man, you think that. But I remember just being like, we're doing this show, and now we got to record... Three hours of fucking fodder? No, thank you. Uh, I mean, they were fun. They were certainly fun when we only had like one show to, to deal with and to delve into. But now it's, uh, you know, it's morphed. The show's morphed. The show's grown. The show has morphed. And with having you on two weeks in a row, it is a little, it's kind of tough. We talked a lot last week. This week, pretty slow week uh, in the niche. <laughs> so like, I'm not sure how we're going to fill the time, I don't, you know. I don't know what you want to talk about, but we'll do uh, a tight twenty. Tight we'll do 20, a tight twenty, and then, and then get out. Get the hell uh, out. Yeah, we. Uh, it is. It's a big week in the niche this week as we finally drop the the state of the niche, which is what we're covering all episode this fod. It is the state of the niche recap fod. Uh, bring your questions at the Glass Cannon us on Twitch here to uh, get your your questions into Brennan, who will then forward them over to us, and uh, hopefully we can get into it. I mean, we have a lot to talk about even before we get to questions because we want to delve into this stuff. Uh, and it's so funny. I'm looking at the the rundown and I'm of the show, and I'm thinking we had an absolutely enormous episode of the Glass Cannon podcast this week, <laughs> and it didn't even make the cut. It's buried for the it's buried for the rundown. Yeah, can't even get to it. Uh, It's also probably for the best because that shit ain't over. So we probably shouldn't be talking about it. But um, nonetheless, we a lot of huge news dropped this week uh, on a variety of different things. And uh, and my first question out of the gate before we get into the nitty gritty of what was talked about. uh, Is it where did I get this shirt? Glad you asked. Uh, This is from (laughs) Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix. Two days in. Drop his uh, referral code in the chat, if you will. Right, if you still got it, go ahead and toss it in there. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be the shirt that we golf in the next time we get a, a day off sometime in late September. <laughs> really excited. Really glad I bought those clubs. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, now we don't have any time to And then didn't golf a single time, yeah. yeah. You know what the irony of that statement is? Is like, we definitely don't have time to golf in September. Like, that is a fact. I know, yeah. That was we, a bad we might have time before September, but not in September. Uh, after the State of the Nation, um, I, I feel like, I mean, there was a few thousand people watching. You were, you know, you're, you're giving this address, uh, unveiling all of these things that we've been working on for, for a year or more, a year and a half. And you, uh, you know, how did it go for you? How was the evening and how how'd you feel the next morning when you woke up? Uh, I felt great. I was, uh, and I even said it on the stream, I was, my nerves were up a little bit beforehand just because, uh, it was just a lot of information. We've never really put anything anywhere near that much information about, uh, our network out there at one time. And I mean, how long have you and I been either here on fodder or on like, uh, our audio only shows or on a Twitch show being like, there's a lot going on. We can't talk about, well, we talked about pretty much everything with the exception of like the, the details about the convention that we can't talk about. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things that I, I, I don't know what my my nerves were. It wasn't like it's not performance anxiety, and it wasn't like oh I hope they're gonna like it because I don't give a shit. Um, but like I it was about just making sure I got it all out there and presented it in the way that I wanted to present it. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to yeah. make sure that I, you know, we're talking about some sensitive topics too. I want to make sure that I'm presenting it the right way. And when you're doing it extemporaneously, you never know if you're gonna like phrase things the right way or not. But generally, I, I, I couldn't be happier with it. And uh, you know, after my wife went to bed, I, I came back and I and I rewatched uh, from the announcements on, just because like when you're in it, you I kind of like lose myself. So I wanted to see how it all came out. I wanted to see what the reactions were in the Twitch. And then I went read through the Discord, read through the Reddit, went on Twitter, and just kind of dug in and 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 got some impressions. And I've I've pretty much been doing that 
all week. Just uh, as a uh, as an observer, a la the Watchers in the Marvel Universe, just kind of like, hmm, <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Ah, curious. Oh, all right. That's I thought of it that way. They're really latching on to that aspect of what I said. <laughs> uh, so it's it's been a fun week, a wild week. But it's so funny because you came over yesterday with our uh, our agent Kevin uh, to my house, and uh, and and we hung out, and we we didn't really we weren't social at all. We just worked. Um, and, uh, it was great having you guys come over, uh, but we haven't been recording much lately. We've just been having meetings, uh, about the, all these things going on. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get back recording, but I'm also like, uh, it's, that's like a muscle that it's been a couple of weeks since I feel like it's been a couple of weeks. It hasn't that since we've really dug into something and we're recording something tonight and I'm like, I'm already four hours into prep since 6 a.m. this morning on it. It's just kind of really digging in and trying to figure out where it's going to go. And it's good to be back. But now then I'm just like thinking about like, oh, I've got four more meetings uh, coming up between now and Tuesday. So, you know, it's just it's a weird time. But I mean, it's an exciting time. You have to admit, like, this right. is the most exciting time in the history of the Glass Cannon Network. It sure is. Let's dive in uh, and get right into it, starting with yesterday and our meetings. Uh, our meetings with our agent were all about the tour and uh, how we're approaching all this stuff. And as uh, the CDC releases some new updates uh, and cities are suddenly, you know, uh, following in line with that, uh, Troy is putting a mask on and then he threw it away. He threw it away. Um we're going to see I think we're going to see more and more vaccinated people feeling comfortable uh, getting indoors with a lot of people again. And uh, D.C., which was originally booked in July. W w I don't know what you thought. You thought you had a very positive outlook on this thing coming around fast. I did not. Myself, Matthew, we definitely thought we would not be touring before September. Uh, but then we get word that they're 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 open and they're, they're going to have uh, full capacity. And if you're vaccinated, it's safe to be in there. Uh, word on the street is. And so um, we put up tickets for sale last night. So what does it mean to you uh, as in a mere two months or so? Uh, it looks like we're going to be back on the road. How does that make you feel? Oh, baby, this is what I've been waiting for. This is my bread and butter. This is what I love more than, arguably more than anything we do. Just getting in front of that audience, getting to hang with the nation, getting to do what we love uh, in front of people live. Because that extra element just, it adds so much to it. And it's a, it's a different vibe than our other shows. All our shows have their own unique vibe. But the vibe of Glass Cannon Live was the vibe we wanted from the beginning. We want it to feel like a party, uh, you know, a, a fun take on the... Uh, the idea of an adventuring party. We're all having an adventuring party. And so I'm just so glad to to get back into it. And obviously we're approaching it uh, cautiously. We want to make sure, I don't think you, just because you don't have to wear masks indoors anymore, the, different states have different laws. You might have to wear a mask for these shows and, and you still got to be careful. Nothing's 100% even with these vaccines, but... I mean, it's a rush of emotions. We're we're so excited to get back out there, and we just want to make sure we do it the right way, and we want to make sure that our fans feel comfortable enough to to purchase tickets and come to the you know what's going to be a new and exciting <clears throat> Glass Cannon Live experience. And Wednesday night, Kevin uh, messaged us was like, "So DC's ready to go if you want to do this." And so I threw that poll up on Twitter, just being because I'm worried because I felt like the Atlanta and Indy tickets. Uh, they came out the gate a little bit slower than they normally do. I mean, we're still almost half full on both shows and they're going to sell out. But I was like, I don't want to, you know, if people are nervous about September shows and maybe I was looking over reading it, um, may, are they going to be ready for a July show? But then the poll showed us that we'd have over 300 people uh, that would said they'd want to come. I'm like, all right, let's release the crack and let's get those tickets out there. And then Kevin was just wheeling and dealing. I was like, let's get it up less than 24 hours after that poll uh, goes up so that the people that said, yes, they're going to go can put their money where their mouth is. And we sold out of VIP tickets within uh, an hour and a half of those tickets going live. And uh, I mean, I think it's only, I think that might end up being the first show that sells out. I hope it is. I loved the DC show. It was one of our. It was one of our last shows, and it was our first time in D.C. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, we did one show in D.C. Yeah, and then two months later, we were shut down uh, for the pandemic. You know, and what's good and is man, especially dude, that was a the... great show. Yeah. Do you remember how great that show was? Yes, and we're, we're such a political focused podcast. It's good that we're going to start <laughs> off in our nation's capital. I think that that's just that we're yeah. marrying these two things that we do so well is the, our political stances. <laughs> 
and uh, you know, being in the heart of Washington D.C. I just, I can't wait. <laughs> Our intense political messaging. That we uh, <laughs> make sure to always put out there. Um, so I'm getting the vibe here, at least from what we're seeing in D.C., that you're not too concerned about about smaller crowds, about losing uh, some of that uh, revenue, because make no mistake, from a business standpoint, we and we discuss this a lot. I'm always biting my nails for every one of these shows that are not in New York or Philly or Boston, um, because w once you get into flights and especially when you get into hotels uh, for our whole team, uh, you know, we don't make a lot of profit on these things. It's really close to the line. And I'm I'm worried that COVID is going to mean that, you know, we're we might lose money on these things. Would you be willing to lose money on these things to go out or break even? Uh, or do you see it as a as a revenue thing or do you just need to go out and do live shows again for marketing purposes and for your own uh, creative energy? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, we can't hemorrhage money on these shows and, and we're not no you know, currently not hemorrhage but, money but, but we take also a loss at all one dollar you know yeah to me it's a it's a you know it's a marketing ex expense you know we're, we're selling out 300 seat venues so that eventually we can sell out 3,000 seat venues and so to me it's like doing these shows putting on the best show that we can because we've got you know if, if we if we sell 300 tickets someplace and yet we have half a million downloads per month. There's a lot of people that know us that just are like, I don't need to go see them live. You know, we're like, oh, that's not my thing. Like, I want us, as we continue to grow, people be like, I have to get to that show. I can't miss it. Yeah. If it's anywhere near me or, or even like, oh, you know, I've been meaning to fly to New York. I have to go see that show. The, any money that we we're, we're lo losing now or if we're not making enough or breaking even, it's 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 investing in the future of glass cannon line so we can sell out bigger venues but it is going to be a, a different experience we had to really change the the vip experience you know we're doing less people and and that meant we had to raise the price but we're we're changing the experience there's going to be a debrief live on stage after the show now for our vip people we're just going to like talk about our immediate press impressions of the show that was something we added a nice badge that you get that's going to be unique to that event uh that you can wear it says vip so you can look like wayne and garth in wayne's world <laughs> uh <especially laughs> fast. and then uh you know and then uh, an after party that they'll you know it's going to evolve as the 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 standards for safety evolve as well but uh we can't not have the party we just have to do it safely do it in, yeah be smart yeah let's look at the lineup of shows this this was uh well i'm not gonna lie and say it was my most excited part of the night but i was excited uh to to have everybody see what we've been planning in terms of our big lineups for new things to add into the mix including uh, a season three of getting the trunk with grant as handler uh our co um collaborative work on the dune rpg with stream of blood mm -hmm. uh D, D 5e the patreon uh milestone show uh the cast is set uh and then we, we, we teased a little blades in the dark quarter four late <laughs> quarter four q4 blades q4, in the d b in the d, <laughs> b uh, I d. <laughs> yeah. uh it is amazing i'm very excited to be able to talk about all this, all this in the open now so um let's just do a couple quick fire questions uh why grant handler season three of, of delta green um because I want to put out more Delta Green content, and uh, I don't think it's possible, uh, and you you would agree, that for you to con continually be running a, a a weekly show or anything even close to a weekly show, that's not that's not what you're interested in. Just like, why are we rotating Raiders and Legacy? That's what Skid likes the most. That's what he uh, wants to do. It's better for his brain space to like switch back and forth. And likewise, like I asked you, I'm like, do you want to do, do you want this to be a weekly show? Do you want to like take a month off and then jump back in? You're like, no, man. And you said this months ago, you're like, I could do two of these a year. And I just think because of the popularity of the show, we need to put out more than two 12 episode, 12, 14 episode seasons. So I went to Grant. I'm like, Grant, do you feel comfortable running this? And he said he was he was down. So he's going to do season three, and then hopefully that we'll get you for season four. And then next year, I'll have worn you down enough to want to do a, a full-on weekly campaign. Next year, we'll hire an actual operations person to do all the shit I don't feel like doing. <laughs> and then I could just play games. Ah, uh, the dream from the start. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, the Dune RPG. This is something 
I mean, we teased. All we did was tease. And there's really not much that we can talk about in terms of detail. But is there any any way you could tease us with a little of your, like your vision for this Dune product? I mean, I know what it is. But like, can you tell everybody sort of what you're thinking this thing is going to be? What will it look like? Um, I don't want to say too much, uh, but when... Yeah, you, know, you got to be careful. Jared and I started talking Dune... Uh, this was like last October, I think. And, uh, you know, obviously it had been clear to anybody that read Raise the Lost Continent that you and I just eschewed reading it. We tried and gave it up many, many times. So I said, all right, you know what? I think this is a great idea. It's perfect to time it up with the release of the movie. Uh, I've enjoyed what I've seen from Modiphius. Let's do it. Uh, I, I, I'm all in. So then I said, I got to read this fucking book. And so I got the book. <laughs> and you know, and I've mentioned this on the show, I have not read a novel, a non-gaming book, since before my first son was born. I was reading uh, Oathbringer and... Uh, or I can't even remember the title, Oathbreaker. I'm, I'm rereading it right now. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, I'm just going to do it. And so I sat down and I read Dune in about three weeks. And I was like... the. Why, why, why didn't I hate this before? This is one of the best books I've ever read. And so I just fell down the ra the Dune rabbit hole. And uh, you know, now you're involved in these meetings as well with with the Stream of Blood guys. And we're just we're we're figuring this out. We had a meeting with Modiphius a couple of weeks ago, talking to them. And so, you know, I don't want to say too much because you may end up being a player in there. And so uh, I True. just think I just think Jared and I have some really cool ideas. It's just going to see how do we. How do we make it work for a stream? I will say, I think what we're going to do is something I've never heard done on a, on streams before. And part of that is because of the collaborative nature. We're bringing two groups together, even though our groups are very different. You know, Jared is Jared, Clint, Brian, and Ross is their main person in a rotating cast. We have our core cast and then a lot of uh, guests and regulars. So it, it's going to be really, really unique and interesting. And the game looks gorgeous gorgeous yeah, yeah it cool. looks gorgeous and that's something that i'm hoping for can't promise but i mean just a little behind the scenes of that uh meeting with modifius they were so cool and were also open to helping us get uh, access and licenses and stuff like that for uh their artwork uh that could make it just look very much like the book which looks amazing and so if we can combine those things for a stream that's gonna be pretty incredible um, let's keep yeah. moving. The D and D show, uh, be honest, scale of one to 10, one, not worried at all. 10, uh, absolutely concerned about this. What, how concerned are you that the D and D five E show is going to eclipse the glass cannon podcast in popularity? <laughs> <laughs> oh, champagne problems. Yeah, champagne problems. Yeah, for real. Oh, no, something we made is really popular. <laughs> No, they won't I, even I, want to listen to our show anymore. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, no, I mean, I'm, we're so excited about this. We're, we're fully, fully behind it, and that's why we put together such a powerhouse group. I mean, this group. You know, in many ways, Sydney is the connective tissue, but because of our coll uh, collaboration with Jared over the past year, he's as much of a connective tissue. And Nora, as well, has become a big part of the nation. What we did with Ross and then Claire, if you don't know Claire Grant, you're going to get to know her very, very well. And she came personally recommended uh, by Jared. They go way back. I mean, this is a – what is the, what do the kids say? Like, this group fucks. This is a group <laughs> that is going – it's going to be a must-watch show every single week. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible. Uh, it's incredible. I think when we first came up with the goal, uh, the milestone goal for Patreon, I think that we imagined it would all be like people we really didn't know. And we would just like run a casting in New York and just sort of like, you know, hire actors and, you know, like them in the interview and then move forward, you know. And in this case, I mean, there are multiple people in this show that we played multiple games with on streams. We just weren't in that position when we first made the goal. We right. didn't even have that many people that we did streams with, you know, outside of the, the core groups. And so uh, th th now I'm so excited because I really know the potential of that crew and uh, it's going to be it's going to be freaking great. Yeah, um, and, and Jared's story, you know, uh, he sent is, uh, you know, this, the thing he's working on, this is going to be an all, all original uh, story. Uh, it's great. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that, like, GMs have this. I've, I've seen it with, uh, I've seen it with, who have I seen it with? I think it was Eric Mona. 
Um, and there's somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't think it was Bowman. Oh, no, it was actually one of the writers that we met with uh, on uh, GCP 2.0 who talked about like they just have this like sort of like short list of ideas, right? They're just like nuggets of ideas that they've been sitting on for a while. And when they get hired to do a job, a lot of times they just pull something out of that hat. And that's what it felt like with Jared. He was like, this is a game I've been brewing in my head for a long time, but I've never put together and I could right. do it for this show. And now he's got the form to do it. And when he uh, sent the idea, we were just like, that's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for that to get underway. Uh, and it's uh, just so prolific. I mean, I, I, it's going to be, I don't have time to watch streams that I'm not on anymore. I don't even listen to them. Like even fiasco this week, I was putting it together and getting it ready to go out. Like I, I, I don't have time to watch it anymore. Uh, that's one I'm, I feel like I'm going to have to watch. And especially where we're, you and I are going to be very heavily involved behind the scenes, shaping it so that it, it still has that, that GCP feel. Uh, I, I think it's, it's going to be nice to kind of just, just wear a producer hat and not have to worry about being on at all. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just really excited to see where it goes. Um, Blades in the Dark, we don't have to get into. Um, I, I just I wish we could play it now. I mean, that's my only thing is I wish we could be doing it right now. It's just it's so tough to to add it into the um, to the production schedule right now. But we, we love the game so much and we know we want to play. Um, you know, I, I just I, it's my favorite game. Like it's my yeah. favorite game of the Thank last you. year. And I, I just think the game itself is incredible and I, and I want to play more of it. So we're excited to see more of that. If you guys have any questions, ask it in listener mail. Uh, but for now, we, we only have time to get to the big stuff. Now we have two <laughs> real big things. I will say that. though, it, when, I, when I was showing you the slides leading up to the presentation, you were like, how are we going to add blades in the winter? Because <laughs> we're just, we just want to play it so bad. We're like, well, in the first just... draft, you said fall. I did and say I was fall. like, stop it, stop. Like, so we're going to go Dune into five into, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> we have to play it. You know what I mean? I've got a, a bookshelf a mile long with games that I'm dying to play. You know, I, I keep talking about Band of Blades and Scum and Villain. And it's like, there's no way I'm going to play these for at least over a year. But like Blades in the Dark, I've got to find a way to play this year and put it on the network. It has to happen. Here's a question. Um, and I think this is a good question. This, this will give everybody, I think, some insight into your the way you think. Uh, why can't you play Blades in the Dark on New Game Who Dis? If you want to play it so bad, why can't you just slot it in to the already existing uh, workflow of New Game Who Dis? I've thought about it. I have considered it. I think the, the current New Game Who Dis structure, I feel like it doesn't do justice to a game that we already know is something we want to do more long term. Uh, I thought about doing a new game who dis where it was like a pilot. It would be three episodes that would be a pilot episode or a prequel to the actual series. But then I worried about like it not it not being what I want it to be and, and maybe wanting to switch up the cast like it, there's just. I, I, I like the format of New Game Who Dis being, at least right now, three-ish sessions with four players and a GM. I Everyone's going to want to play Blades. My, I'm going to have to be making a lot of people upset because I can't have everybody on Blades. And so I want to make sure that that... I just feel like with our experience with Blades so far, it needs to be its own precious thing. Um, and so it's not like New Game Who Dis would sully it, but I just feel like... We've it's already passed the new game who dis test and it's going to be its own show. <clears throat> Let's get to the big juicy stuff. The two main properties that we put out there, Androids and Aliens and the Glass Cannon Podcast, aka Giant Slayer Campaign and what comes next. This is the big news at the end of the night on the State of the Nation. And the, and, uh, the thing I was most excited about, uh, it was not I was not the most excited about the the announcement of the shelving of uh, Androids and Aliens. Uh, it was the, uh, the the GCP 2.0 stuff, but um, let's talk about ANA. Let's talk about the impending yeah. hiatus of Androids and Aliens. Uh, after the completion of Dead Sons, uh, we made this decision to put it on hiatus for, for the time being, reassess some things, and uh, obviously that's, that's a tough part of the announcements. Uh, a lot of people are disappointed with the news, even though perhaps they saw the writing on the wall for it. Uh, I didn't actually catch the Q&A, so honestly, I'm not sure. I saw the announcement, but I didn't catch the Q&A, so I'm not sure what was already asked on How the topic. convenient! Yeah, um, <laughs> but it, it got long, dude. You told me it was going to be 15 minutes. I told you it was going to be 40, 
and then it was an hour of I, just the announcements. I don't know how, and and I because I, I'm looking at it on paper. I've got you know I got nine ten pages of notes, but like. I just, it just started talking and started bebopping and scatting. You know, I was trying to like, I don't want to just read from my notes because my notes aren't written in a way that's presentational, but like, as I start talking about things and start going off and, and getting a, a, a emotions involved, it just, it's easy to have gone an hour. I was shocked when I, when I got to the end, I was talking about the writers and I'm like, oh my God, it's nine o'clock. The tickets <laughs> need to go on sale in, in, in one minute ago. Uh, so in one minute ago, that, that um, happens, <clears throat> but yeah, let's, let's talk about a and I really want to talk about it because I think it was something that like, I knew it's like, I, I didn't want to open the show with a and I didn't want to end the show with the a and news. And, and I also knew that like doing it right before the end was, there was no good place to put that information in. But like, uh, after it was out there, I immediately moved on to GCP 2.0 and then I delved into it a little bit in the Q and a, but I know there are still a lot of questions out there and I think we need to, I think we need to dig into this a little bit. So let's talk a and well, let's start. Well, then I'll just start general um, instead of trying to ask the questions that I have. I'll leave a lot of it open to listener mail, but I will ask you a, a more generic question. Um, looking back over the announcement uh, at the comments, et cetera, is there anything that you wish to add that you didn't say in the initial announcement? I mean, uh, there could be a lot of different things. It's a very general question. Is there anything that you want to th- say now? No. No. Okay. You just no. want to see what people want to talk I'll about. I'll respond to questions, that. but yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's funny cause you, you say like, oh, I was, it's not like I was excited about the ANA news, but like, I don't know if that's entirely true. You know, I think, and this is where it's going to get difficult to talk about this. Uh, and I don't want to speak for you, but like for the five founding members of the glass cannon podcast. And, I, and again, I'm not speaking for everybody, but myself, Joe, Gid, Matthew and Grant, the people that created this network, um, the owners, of uh, Glass Cannon Network, LLC. Uh, We have known for a while that like Androids and Aliens, as much as we enjoyed the show, as much as we enjoy playing with uh, Sydney, David and Ellie, uh, as much as we love doing that live stream, it is a burden for us with all the other products we are creating. Um, With the Glass Cannon podcast being uh, our flagship show, uh, the show that launched a thousand ships and the one that is like our, our baby. And then all this other new stuff we're doing androids and aliens as much as we love it and whatever we all have differing views on starfinder like we we make jokes about like ah this starfinder's painting this i actually really enjoy starfinder um there's some aspects of i don't like but i feel that way about pathfinder and all the games we play at the end of the day committing to a long-term show like this just doesn't work with the way our network has changed when we first launched ana having a second weekly show was the big goal we wanted that but our business has evolved, and it's evolving daily to try and keep up with that. And it's not a financial thing. It's not anything other than the, the time and the commitment that it takes to do these. From to do like, a weekly uh, a campaign. Week. Yeah. One story doesn't... every week, one system over and over and over again. Um, it just, it's starting to, it didn't fit the model that we no. uh, came across over the last couple of years of, of seasonal content. Yeah. And so, and this is where it becomes difficult. It's like the five of us could not be more excited to end this chapter and move on to other things because it has been a very, it's been a very difficult part of our, uh, our growth. Um, it's, it's, not that it stood in the way of our growth because there's people who, who are, this is their favorite show. And this is like, this is the reason they listen to our other content. It's just for us and our time and our availability, it was standing in the way of other things. And so it, it's, it's, it's hard. Obviously we, we, we canceled Echo Quest earlier this year. And I, I was, I was teasing it then that this would be happening. Uh, that there's, I said, I think I said in that announcement, like there'll be other announcements to come that you're not going to like. And, and that's what, uh, that's what I was referring to. And so, you know, we're, we're excited because now this is going to free up our time to do other things. But I'm devastated to, 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 to stop playing this show because I know a lot of people love it. At the same time, I'm thinking of this as a creator and I'm like, I just want to go out on a high note. I've got, you know, X amount of episodes, probably 30-ish episodes left to go. I want to tell an awesome story and this show, final episode of A&A, and then just be like... Good night, everybody, and have it just sit out there and be like, that was a really cool fucking piece of art. 
Um, and as much as it's going to bump people out, that that, that next week there's not going to be an A&A. Uh, and then if it ever returns, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be different people, different games. Uh, it, it's something that we're very happy with decision-wise, uh, even though it has, you know, sad elements to it. Blind Rival X says, it just seems like less work to continue a story than learn a whole new system just for three episodes. But I don't run a podcast, lol. Yeah. Um, you know point. what, I'm, I'm going to speak to that real quick. This is just for me. It, it, it could be easier for sure, but you don't get to meet and work with different people. That's the problem. That's the, that is where we are trying to expand who we meet and play with. We're trying to expand the publishers that we know in the industry and work with. We're trying to uh, just expand our knowledge of gaming and tabletop in general as the hobby is exploding. We don't want to keep uh, you know toiling away in one hole, only looking at one game with one set cast for years and years and years. Uh, that's just not the, the, the way that we want to go. Uh, we feel like there's there's much more opportunity to be had by expanding in in those different directions than in uh, you know a single campaign uh, at least for me I mean that's that's the way that I think about it yeah it's more work but you get more out of the work uh, when you are constantly shifting and changing and adding new people and and look part of that experiment was Raiders Raiders was part of that experiment from the get go we said when Raiders started it was we need to get new people on the network we need to get a rotation of new cast members because we were all starting to feel a little burnout we some people needed time off people needed to 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 take a break here and there and the it didn't work it just didn't work. I mean, there were great moments, great scenes, great character things, and uh, and terrific performers. But as the campaign, it, it it stressed Skid out to no end. Scheduling was really tough. And then we had all those moments Continuity. where you could tell, <laughs> yeah, you could tell Skid was so frustrated, being like, "Well, you know, I mean, Dracius is there, so why is he not coming along?" You know what I mean? He's just like, ah, you know, he's he's, he's depressed, and he just sits there and looks at the ground. And it, you know, it's it's immersion breaking. It yeah. it fouls up, you know, the story, and so. We felt at, after a certain point that that was a, a failed storytelling model uh, to just try to do a straight campaign where you constantly rotate the cast. But if you do these three episode arcs, you can rotate the cast a lot. So yeah. anyway, that was one you know, part of the thinking. Where I think a lot of people are concerned about our burnout. You know, people always ask like, how do you guys do this without burnout? And androids and aliens represented that thing that like needed to be pulled out in order to like release the pressure of possible burnout you know that's something had to had to give and like you know new game who dis being able for you joe to take a couple weeks off for me to take a couple weeks off for us like that's the beginning of that like allowing other we we want to collaborate with new people but also having days where like a, a show goes up on the network that i don't have to gm a show goes up on Twitter. the fact that i can just like take a break from that is huge with Anders and Aliens, that's just not an option. Um, and Yeah, you, you know, know what? I didn't even think about that exactly. I mean, I thought about it, of course, but in what I've just said, I haven't gotten that across either, which is that you're the GM, and that's a problem because your duties as CEO are getting so intense and expansive as all these different projects are coming up that you're overseeing all of that, like, you, you can't – something's got to give. That's all it is. Something's got to give. And, uh, and A&A, you know, it had to – it had to just, you know, it's going to finish its story. We're not cutting it off. Yeah, yeah. You know I, I mean? think a lot it's of people thought they're just going to end it. But no, there's yeah. a show tonight. It's going to be very good. Uh, you know, this is another thing, though. And people like will say, uh, well, if, if Troy's burnt out, and it's not really the case. It's just like I'm picking and choosing what I want to focus my attention on, what I want to focus the attention of the network on. Like, just have somebody else run it. But, like, look at what we've had to go through to get, like, for me to feel like Jared is the guy for our first show without us. You know what I mean? And like when you did Alien Live and when Skid did Star Trek Adventures Live on, on New Game Who Dis, it almost gave both of you a heart attack. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like there's, there, and you oh, guys- I was so miserable. I, was I trust so you miserable. more than anyone. Yeah. And so like, it's not like we can just slot somebody in to like take over the property because it's not going to be, uh, I, I need to make sure that it's a show that I can fully stand behind. And that is going to take time. It has taken <clears> us <throat> six years for me to be like, Jared Logan can do this. You know, <laughs> it's taken me six years to be like, 
Matthew can GM new game who does, <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. And if this isn't about like a control freak, like I need to be the one driving the car. It's, it's about quality control. It's about making sure that what we put out there is something that I feel like is going to be the best, the best exemplification of what we do. And that's not something that you can just do overnight. So it's not like we're like, all right, uh, here, you run a and a good luck. You know, it's not about the money. It's about like, it has to be a show that's, that's right. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll get, I'll ask one question before we move on. Do you yeah. think, uh, in your heart of hearts that, uh, ANA would still be shelved, uh, and, and in conjunction Starfinder would still be shelved if there was not a pandemic? Do you think yeah. if we were in the studio and we were doing it live week in and week out, it would still have been shelved at the end? Well, my, my gut reaction is yes, because we've been talking about canceling it forever. And I just, I didn't want to cancel it because I wanted to finish the story. That was my main thing. Now we built that set, the set that we're tearing down, uh, and it had the pandemic never happened. And we kept pumping out eps on that set. You know, if, if that was the thing that was going to get us from, uh, you know, 200, 300 viewers to 1,000, 2,000 viewers, then it would be a lot harder for me to cancel it. You know what I mean? If, if, I, if I tune in every Friday night and I'm looking at the numbers and the numbers are just through the roof, it's really hard to cancel a show like that that's popular. Now, I'm not saying it's Android's fault that we're canceling it, but like, yeah, there's, there's certain factors that may have changed our decision, but this is something that we have been talking about and pseudo planning for a long time. And so, yeah, it's just, it's time to, time yeah. to pull the point. Um, let's talk about the good stuff. The highlight of the night, at least for me, uh, GCP 2.0, not the highlight of the night for some people, but it was certainly was for me. Uh, and I'm excited to finally talk about it on the FOD. We have been working on this for more than a year and uh i've had to keep it secret on every episode of fodder every question that came up about what's after giant slayer etc i have to ignore uh and it was tough um i'm gonna fire a few questions at you here just to, and then we'll get to get to everybody's questions uh let's start with why is it the best decision for us to start phasing out uh of the the world of galarian uh and and sort of like moving away from that even we are still going to have some uh on patreon but uh, for a very long time but starting that process between starfinder and then uh, or the packed worlds i should guess i should say uh between starfinder and then uh the glass cannon podcast why is it good for us to start moving away from galarian yeah i mean so there's two aspects of that right like from a business perspective and i kind of talked about this a little bit on the stream it's it's smart as we continue to grow to control our own intellectual property and so that was a, a big driving force very early on i wanted to create something that was wholly ours so that's the obvious part um and it's the least interesting part to be honest it's the creative aspects of being able to create something from the ground up with you know all of the great creative minds that we have involved on this project. To me, uh, you know, that that excites me more than anything. When when we started out the Glass Cannon podcast before we had any other shows, we're 40, 50 episodes in, how many times do you have to talk me off the ledge of me being like, dude, this isn't what I want to do. I just, I want to be auditioning for TV and film. I don't even want to yeah. be fucking doing voiceover and commercials. I'll do, I do that for paydays. Like I want to be doing TV, film. I want to be writing. I want to be doing stand up. And like you just kept saying like, you know, if you're resonating with an audience, just you have an opportunity here. and. Blah, 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 blah. And like for me, as we continue to grow, I saw an opportunity to marry what I've always wanted to do with what we are doing. And so to me, that's just so exciting as a creator. But like I also knew that I couldn't do it by myself. Not that I couldn't. It's just with, with everything else we're, we have going on, it wasn't something that I felt comfortable just doing solo in a vacuum. Not only that, the show is going to be so much better if you find a bunch of cr creative people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds. All of that is going to enrich the show. Um, and so, yeah, it's just like a dream come true. To I'm, I feel like I'm going to be sh legit show running uh, a TV show. It's going to be on Twitch. But uh, to me, it's just to creating our own, own world, the possibilities of that. Like there was a lot... It was a long time when I thought like I would just pick this up. I would pick up at the end of Giant Slayer. I would like move forward in time 10 years and I would start an adventure based on some of the stuff we that have that has come out of Giant Slayer, but have it be like 10 or 10 or, or a generation in the future. But I kept I kept having this sticking point where it's like I feel like 
trapped by Galarian. I feel like I want to just, the stuff that I've enjoyed the most, well, I mean, not the most, has been like the Highbury stuff. And, and the stuff that we've done with like, uh, you know, obviously Osirian is Gal- Galarian, but the stuff that we've done with Brander, all of that home, those homebrew elements of episode 100, 200, yeah, 300. But, but Osirian is not, Osirian is just an analog of, you know, ancient Egypt. Like right. it's, it's all, you know what I mean? Like it, it's by a, a horse by a different name, you know? So it's not yeah. like you're, you're talking about things you are originally creating in a backdrop of a setting that is from human history on earth, you know? So it's, it's like, right. it, it feels good. It feels exciting to have that kind of creative uh, energy. I've never once looked uh, at the Pathfinder wiki on Osirian and been like, what is Osirian like? I just picture what like ancient Egypt looks like. That's what I go from. And so, I don't know. I, I just felt like when you have, if you have an opportunity to do something new, that is gonna that that's exciting to me. Now some people are scared of new, very obviously scared of new. For me, it's just like, oh my god, the possibilities are endless. And we hope that it's so successful that like this is the beginning of you know uh, innumerable adventures that happen in this world. And so everything that is built from episode one on, we're gonna be creating our own history of this world as well. And so future adventures, maybe that we won't even play in, have on our network that other people will write in our campaign setting may reference things that happen on the show. I mean, that is, if you're not excited about that, you, you need excitement lessons. <laughs> <laughs> well-timed look at the camera, well-timed look. Yeah. Um, why is expanding the cast the best creative decision <laughs> for, for the podcast? Well, now this is a funny one because like there's obviously people that are upset because, you know, our focus on expanding the cast is on uh, diversity and inclusion. And I, I'm not going to speak to that. That It's not worth speaking about. Uh, our, our point is expanding the cast is like we think, not unlike bringing in writers from all walks of life, is going to make a richer experience. We think as much as people love the core five, as much as people love the show that we've done for the past six years, is that the Glass Cannon podcast, this world that we're creating, this network that we're expanding, it needs new voices. It needs other voices than ours. And even though the five of us have very different life paths. We've all come from different walks of life. There is an overwhelming similarity, and it's not the color of our skin, and it's not our sex. Those those play into it as well. Um, but like, it's just, it's a, there's a similar, there's a, there's a lot of similarities. We should have new, uh, new, uh, new blood, new voices, new experiences, because it's going to make the overall show better. I don't understand why people can't see that. And I think it really just comes down to don't mess with something that works. Like your friends. The, the part of what I like listening is listening to friends around the table. When we recorded episodes one of the, I, I had hung out with Grant once and Matthew twice. Matthew and Grant weren't my friends. Matthew and Grant became my friends. Skid because didn't know. we played the game. Right, Skid barely knew Matthew. I think they maybe saw each other once. Remember, remember they never even spoke before the if first Matthew episode. Matthew was not already married, I think he might marry Skid. They are best friends now. They're right. best friends. And then, I mean, I'd be shocked. They probably spoke at one of my Christmas parties. No, because like, I wasn't even friends with him. So they would have spoken at like one of your Super Bowl parties, maybe. So <laughs> maybe, yeah, people yeah. think like, oh, I want to listen to these five friends. That's why I like it. They, we weren't friends. We weren't friends until 100 episodes in. We were working on a project together and we became friends. So the people that we bring on, it, that's the element we're looking for. I'm not casting actors to be on this show. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm bringing people on who are going to, uh, who are going to fit that friendship feel. Probably actual friends. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't want to talk too, too much about casting. We'll get into it a little bit in the Q and A, but like, to me, it's just like, it's so obvious we need more people. Now, listen, I understand the hesitancies of that. Part of what makes Androids and Aliens difficult at times is all these people. And then like, then you're gonna do that to the main show? I just think it's it's small minded to think there's not a way to do this that works. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we we know how to do this better than anyone. And I think once we get back into the studio with each other, just like we're reinventing the game of podcasting, we're going to reinvent how you do it with six with six people or with, with six players. I think it's very very easy to do. It's just going to require work. And if you don't think we can put the work into it, then what have you been listening to for six years? It's crazy town. 
we work harder than anybody else. And so I just, I, to me, I'm excited at the prospect. I understand the concerns. I'm like, oh man, six people, that is going to be tough. You want to make sure that everybody has their voice. You want to make you sure, make that, sure combats don't drag. That's a big thing. It's like, how do you make sure combats don't drag? You don't want a round of combat to last 15 minutes. Sometimes it can, but like there, there are a lot of considerations and I'm thinking about every single one of them and how to address them. We're not fucking around with this show. This show is going to... Uh, we're not going to leave any stone unturned in the in the planning and preparations of this show. And I, my general feeling <clears throat> is excitement. And if you like what you, we do, I think you should be excited too. This is uh, this is a bit of an old school uh, business school analogy, but I, I never shared this with you. But this is one of the things that I thought during this during this time, and it speaks exactly to what you said about anybody whose fear is like, why are you messing with a good thing? Right, you've got a good thing. Why are you going to mess up uh, the chemistry of that uh, in any way and, and take that risk? And I I come back to my business school training, which is very very old now and completely obsolete in every way but there is something that i think stands out uh and and i think of it at this moment which is one of the there were a few lessons that they taught you in business school that, and these were like uh my business school was very intense on this we didn't have professors these were not academics i was taught by ex-ceos ex-cfos ex-coos who were adjuncts who made money on the side teaching these classes and they talk about real world experience and real world business stuff and one of the things uh and they would do examples of things companies did that were amazing and were huge for the companies. And one example that this makes me think of that was famous in the world of training and business in the late 90s was uh, Gillette. Gillette had a dominant market share on uh, razor blades, just dominant, when they released the Mach 2 razor. They put two razors in and it was amazing. They had the number one market share with no one else even remotely close. And they went into all this R&D and they put millions and millions of dollars into making a Mach 3 and adding a third blade. And people were like, why would you do that? You had the, the highest market share of product. You did not have to mess with that product at all. Pull it from shelves, take it out, whatever. Uh, you didn't have to change anything. And when they did, they replaced their own show with a or their own razor with a better razor that was even bigger and had got an even better market share. So it's just it's bold. But and you have to ha be willing to take that leap and know that the product you're going to make is going to be better than your best product that you already have out there. And if you're not sure about that, then you're not even going to move forward. But we're sure and we're going to move forward. Uh, and that's that's the uh, little little late 90s business talk for you. Yeah, um, now, now they probably got the Mach 6. Yeah, well, then it became like a <laughs> pop culture joke. But at the time, it wasn't quite yet. Um, they were making millions. Uh, why, uh, why do we want to move to Twitch? And how will moving to Twitch affect the quality of the audio experience for uh, our audio-only listeners, which is the vast majority of our uh, listenership? Yeah. Um, wait, how will it affect the audio quality? Yeah. Well, it won't. Um, the show is still mixed and edited and, and will the, the first episode what about visual uh, humor. What about visual jokes? What well, about not explaining what we're doing on the map? What well, about, in, you know what I mean? In a way that's on us, but in a way like I, that is my way to encourage people to watch the show. I don't want the, the, the listening audience to be ostracized by inside jokes. So that's something we work on. You know, a lot of times it, it works both ways because sometimes we're recording glass cannon and someone will say, I, I move here. And I'm like, Oh, do you have, do you you see that listening audience here you know so just like we have to accommodate uh an audience that can't see what we can see we need to do the same thing uh with we have to find a way to make sure that our video show never just caters to a video audience it's it's tricky but in terms of the audio experience episode one of gcb 2.0 uh is going to be sound a zillion times better than episode one of the class candid podcast i mean I, I grant remixed that when i added a new uh intro to it and like then i listened to the second episode it's it's unlistenable to i was listening to some old episodes in preparation for some glass cannon stuff we're working on and like the sound quality is it's 
I mean, it was better than anything else out there, but I was like, this, I can't even hear myself. I'm on a body mic. I sound like I'm way over here. Uh, so like the, the, the twofold, like the audio experience is going to be light years better than anything than it has ever been. We're also getting new equipment uh, for new cameras and new everything. I'm sure we're going to end up upgrading audio equipment. We're going to have to. Um, and then in terms of like, yeah, how does the visual stuff get lost? I don't know, man. I, I listened to SideQuest Side Sesh in the car when we were doing that. And like, I don't miss it. It's the stuff is there for you to imagine. Like when I say the monster looks like this and you all go, bah, you know, obviously the person listening would like a more visceral description of it, but you can also just be like, Oh, I can kind of picture what that looks like based on what they said. I don't know. I just don't worry about that stuff. Well, I do. Uh, I do because I side with that, that audience, I think more than you do. You just want people to go watch the show. But like I, and I've said this before on fodder, um, I don't have any time to watch shows. I can't. I can't sit and watch something. Yeah. You've got two kids. How do you just sit and watch something besides reality TV? I watch Shark uh, Tank. That's all I watch. <laughs> right. Uh, and so even if I love the show and I want to see the bits, like I might not, I just might not have the time to watch it. I do all my listening, uh, driving, doing the dishes, doing yard work, doing whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so I, I feel like it's on us. I feel like we have to be conscious of that and have to be be better of about being descriptive. That That's good anyway on a video show. You don't just we say, I move it. here. You narrate your turn. You say, you know, I come to the right side of Metra and I look across at Baron and I say, behind you. And then I cast it. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to do that, whether it's a video show or not. And so uh, as long as we don't get lazy, I think it's going to be good. And that's certainly my intention to work toward making an audio experience that is seamless uh, and doesn't seem to change uh, from one thing to the next. Yeah, and we got to please um, each other. You know what I mean? Like if someone is n dropping the ball on their descriptions, it's, it's up to other people to be like – to jump in, you know what I mean? We have to be, we're, I think we're pretty good at that, but like you have to, if someone says I move here or like uh, I just, I swing at them, you know, it's up to me to be like, well, how do you swing at them? Uh, or how do you do this? And, and for us to encourage yeah. each other, it's just it's just putting in the work and doing your job. And, and I think we can do that. All right, let's move it on. Let's get into the listener mail. There's so many people with so many questions. That's it. That's and, all we're talking about. Oh, yeah, we're, we're already all, an hour in. Yeah, wow. We're already running long, but we knew this one was going to be a little long. It's a juicy app. Uh, we got to let everybody, not everybody, as many as we can get their questions in. And uh, we're going to do that now. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to my good buddy, <laughs> Mr. Nick Lowe. <laughs> Nick! Oh, <laughs> Oh, you're missing it, Troy. It's so good. I can feel it in my bones. Oh, I just got an allergic reaction. All right. Let's start with Adam Croak One asks, Hey, guys, loved all the updates and changes. I'll keep my Patreon till I die, good sirs. Fun question. You guys are such good buddies. I wonder if there's ever been a time that you've really been at each other's throats. I imagine it's a funny story, so do tell. <laughs> you know what? That brings up, a, that's a good question because <laughs> that brings something up here, which is like um, all of these things that we're doing uh, that were announced as part of the State of the Nation, you got to understand, Troy and I argue constantly about <laughs> everything that we do, uh, and it gets heated. Uh, and th what you saw in the state of the niche are like the, 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 just the tiniest, tiniest handful of things that we both are all in on. You know what I mean? So it's like, imagine, uh, th that's why I'm just saying, that's why like get excited about what's coming out of all that stuff, because it comes after intense debate, 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 debate about every aspect of every one of these things. Troy doesn't say, I've got an idea. And I say, great idea, Troy. Like every time. That is, is v very far from the way it goes down. And so these are finely honed ideas that 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 come after a lot of uh, a lot of debate. But yeah, I've, I've done my fair share of yelling. Troy doesn't really get worked up, which which then further irritates my Irish temper. Because when you look at somebody who's just like, I don't I don't care about your emotions. You're just like, ah! and it makes it worse. Yeah, but, but no, uh, we argue constantly. One time we uh, we yelled at each other uh, when I put the curse on Baron. Do you remember that? Oh my god, I was so mad. So we cut that out of the episode. Um, <laughs> but like, this was the I think this was probably the only time we legit 
like not that we were going to come to blows, but it was like it reached the fever pitch. And I so I put the curse on Baron, uh, which I knew was going to be like not make a big difference. I just thought it'd be fun. And Grant got really mad. Like he says later that he was play mad, but like his his gut reaction was, you know, and he he stormed off and went to the bathroom. And then like you guys all started piling it on. And I was at the height of sleep deprivation from uh, Archer sleeping because he was just an infant. And like yeah. I blew up. I blew up at all of you guys. And then you started coming at me. And then I said something to you. I mean, it was it was hot. It was hot. I was like, you have tantrums every week on this show. And then you were like, what? And you were like red faced. And then uh, and then you calmed yourself down. You're like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, that was the only time I can ever remember us actually yelling at each other. Um, and it's all on tape. It's all on some raw tape somewhere. Yeah, yeah definitely cut that out of the app. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. Poach Trout asks, uh, is last night's Talisman show on the GCN Employee Lounge the start of a board game themed show? Uh, no, I am not starting any regular running show. All right. <laughs> That's I'm done with that. Uh, no, we had a great time last night, and I can't wait to do it again. Uh, we're it's not going to happen for at least a month or more uh, because of SOB schedule and stuff. But man, we had a great time, and I can't was wait to it do good? it again. I, I tuned in because I was going to be on it with you, and then I was like so glad I didn't because I was going to bed, and you guys, I was like, oh, no one's even in the second circle. Glad I didn't play because <laughs> you were like, I think it's going to go fast. I'm like, you aren't even going to get to the middle. Did you end up finishing it? We finished it. It took three hours and wow. 15 minutes, three hours and 20 minutes, something like that. And uh, and we finished with a legit winner. And it was it was pretty thrilling at the end because uh, everybody was getting into the middle middle. Like It was it was pretty great. Uh, so uh, congratulations. I'm not going to say who won. If you want to watch it on YouTube, yeah. I'll put it up there tomorrow. Okay. Um, Verdukai asks, with the growth of the GCN and ballooning of the casts, are you taking measured steps to be sure and keep the connections to your fan, your fans feel to having a stake in your products as well as quote unquote access? Uh, you know what? That's a really good question. But it's yeah. it's the the struggle of any enterprise like ours uh, with scaling. I could I could literally go get it. I've got a book that's just sitting on my night table. It's just called Scaling Up all caps. Uh, and it's a very, very well regarded business book about making those leaps from, uh, you know, just so kind of your small support community uh, to growing, you know, your business in, in a large way. And that is so important. And I think one thing that I'll say is that to me is represented by uh, Glass Cannon Live. I think our Glass Cannon Live, to me, is nothing even remotely close to a cash cow. It is exhausting and uh, it just isn't, I think that we could do smarter uses of our time to make more money. But man, is it a connection with our community and our audience that we have missed terribly over the last year and a half, terribly. And when that comes back, it is our best chance to talk face to face with people, get in the room with people. And that feeling is incredible. And that I don't think is gonna go away. We're, we're gonna be, we're gonna to be touring forever, mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, th that's that's one of the the measured steps. Otherwise, uh, you know, we just yeah, we just have to make those efforts, and we also have to make the efforts to as we add people to the company, we need to make sure that those are people that get connected into the community that the community wants to be part of. So it's not just the five of us. There's there's more people that everybody can be connected to, and uh, and you know just keep kind of growing it that way. It's um, very hard. I I, I feel horrible. I get emails all the time or slide, people slide into my DMs or private Twitter messages and like I respond to about uh, one fifth of a percent of them just because I can't possibly respond to all of them. I, we're just, we're too busy right now and I feel terrible because sometimes people will write like really sweet things about like how we, we help them at a hard time in their life and I, I really try, especially for the, the more touching ones to, to say something and like, and I just, I can't, I've almost developed a policy where like, I cannot respond. Sometimes I'll just be like, I'll have a second, someone will come in and I'll be like, cool, thanks for listening. You know, but like, I feel sick that I can't do that. And like, there was a time when I, when I could, you know, but like even people that have been with us from the beginning will send me nice messages from time to time and I, I can't even get back to them and I feel terrible about it. So 
it's something that is is very important to us and like you said glass cannon live is that that is one great outlet um to be able to really connect with people because i always say like if you come there and you and, and you get a chance to meet us like we're we're, we're friends for life we're going to be you're hopefully you're going to listen to us forever and we're hopefully going to remember you when we see you at the next show uh and i think the glass cannon convention is going to be another way that this uh connects people because we're going to be all over that and that's going to be a celebration of of, of the nation in many ways as well as yeah. all the other things we have planned but it's something we're very concerned about for sure gcp aaron asks i was watching 30 rock reruns when it hit me is gcp 2.0 pretty much going to be the first actual play podcast with a professional writer's room if so that's awesome uh yeah that's exactly what it is pretty much and it's the term we've used from the beginning it's a term that we've used in every, Troy and I have met individually with every single writer and more writers that are not currently on the team. Uh, and that is the term that's been used the entire time. It's like a television writer's room. That's sort of the vibe uh, that we hope to uh, engender. And we want to make sure that we have something where writers can adapt and change as the adventure adapts and yeah. changes. Uh, I, I think it's going to be freaking great. I don't think anybody's doing that. That was kind of like one of the reasons it was so attractive to me. It was like, I don't think anyone's doing this because people. I don't think people can afford it. You know what I mean? It's funny when people say, what, what do you think about the switch of, of GCP to homebrew? It's homebrew in the sense that like, I'm coming up with the bones of the story, but like what ends up being out there is going to be a collaboration of several of the finest minds in all of gaming. So it's homebrew just seems like the wrong word for what this is do you know what i mean like we're, we're 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 hiring a professional staff like a gaming company would do i don't think anyone else can do that because i don't think anybody else has that kind of money laying around but the our patreon uh and and everything else has made it possible for us to do that and we're risking everything on that because we think it's going to do something that's never been done and richmond is in the chat what's up Ann? Uh, Ann. She said Acquisitions Inc. has actually been doing that for a little oh, while. And I didn't realize that. I'm I'm yeah. curious to know like who who's their ready staff because I just assumed it was them. I maybe that's silly because I'm like maybe I'm sure Jerry and Mike don't have the time to like write these adventures. Uh so yeah, I'm curious to know. Do they like, do a who, podcast? Do they do a stream? Like I don't know what they do. Do they do I I know them from yeah, from streaming and their convention shows, obviously. I don't know how often it is. I don't know if they do week I know they have like A team and B team and C team and all that stuff. So there's plenty of content. I didn't know that they had like a writer's room vibe, but that's that's really cool because I, I love all the shit they do. Um, Sar Sergeant Farva asks, what beer did Joe bring over to enjoy with the smoked pork butt? Oh. Uh, while Troy's smoked pork butt was smoking, we ordered and ate pizza. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. But um, it just wasn't ready yet. But And I had to go. Um, I brought over uh, Kane Brewing Company's uh, Head High. Overhead. Overhead IPA. Overhead IPA. Highly recommend As a gift. Fantastic. I was like, have one. And you're like, no, that's for you because you know that I love Kane and I can't get it. It's only available in New Jersey. Yep. It was so sweet. So we just crushed Coors Lights with Kevin. But yeah, the, yeah. Pork, the pork took 11 friggin' hours. I don't know why I was thinking it would be ready when you came over at <laughs> noon. We stood, literally stood outside next to the smoker eating pizza. In pizza. Uh, pizza. With that amazing smoker smell. I love that smell. Ayara yeah. Art asks, any idea who the new cast members will be for the PF2 show and how many you will add? Uh, right now, the plan is to add two. Uh, and no, no, I have no... Uh, I Well, that's not true. I do have some ideas, but uh, that's something... Well, that's something we won't talk about for a while because it's going to it's going to undergo a lot of changes. And when we do announce it, I want to make sure that it's like locked in. And there's a lot of moving pieces for that because, you know, you're that's that's a that's a big, big commitment. And we want to make sure that when we when we lock lock people in that it's they're locked in. You know, it's not a, a job that you can be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Or like, oh, you know what? The, the chemistry didn't end up really working out with that person. You know, there's this. this this is so precious. It's such a like, it's like uh, putting a ship in a bottle. You know what I mean? Messing with the chemistry of this, you know, it's, I want to make sure that we, we do it right. And so, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that for a while. 
Um, and you know, it's, it's, I'm sure that this people have asked about, um, you know, what's going on with Ellie and David, because I, I, I know that came up the other night, but I was just going through as many questions as I could. And, you know, just in casting in general is not something I can really speak to because, you know, take the instance of Ellie and David, obviously Sydney, we're putting her on the five E show. She's on uh, season two of get in the trunk. Uh, she's, she's, she made it onto those shows. Uh, right now I don't have any plans for Ellie and David, but like, uh, you know, I'm not like rushing to fill spots. I'm I'm taking everything carefully and making sure that like this person is right for this. I mean, Ellie's on fiasco right now. I'm sure David's going to be on something down the line. Like it's it's a matter of like taking our time and and making sure that we get the the right people for the right shows because now we truly do have a network of several different shows. So in terms of who's going to be cast where, I think it's dangerous to start talking about that because it, it's sticky territory. I don't want to make any promises about something and then have it not come to fruition. People are like, oh, what happened to so-and-so? You know, it's difficult when shows get canceled. You know, some people are, are, are left in the lurch. Um, and while we have a lot of shows that we put on, it really is, uh, you know, uh, putting a ship in a bottle, making sure that everything is just right. You know, I'm sure you're going to be seeing Ellie and David again uh, on something. Um, but as to who's being cast on what show and when is someone going to appear again? I that would be very, very uh, in uh, inappropriate to talk about at this stage. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. That's the word I'm looking for. I yeah. I mean, I worked uh, in the world of representing actors for many, many, many years, and um, the the uh, promises of future casting is a very, very sticky situation. And unless, you know, until the deal is signed, I would tell my actors, don't expect to be on anything. Mm -hmm. You can't expect anything until they have signed the dotted line because people just talk and talk and talk and talk. And it just doesn't mean anything until the show is actually airing. So like uh, now that I'm kind of on the other side of that, I'm very cagey to ever tell anybody they're going to be in something that we are not completely decided on the full rounded cast uh, before we talk to a single person. Um, yeah. All right. Moving along. Prop Avery. Asks, What's up, Prop Avery? I uh, loved seeing the talisman stream last night. Thank you. Another talisman shout out. More of that, please. Have you come across Relic, which is a Warhammer 40K version of Talisman and Bags of Grim Dark Fun? Woo! That sounds Relic. really interesting. Relic. I'll have to look into that. Uh, good question. Uh, Kayvon is here. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, on. Are the live shows selling out faster than expected? Will this mean possible more live shows between DC and Atlanta? I can um, answer that. Yeah. No. No, not between uh, DC and Atlanta. Not between DC and Atlanta, but just because. So here's the, the overall scope. This is so fresh because we were talking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Everything is changing so fast, particularly with the CDC's most recent message. And the venues are, and I'm just quoting Kevin here. The venues don't are not even staffed yet. Like they 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 furloughed people, right? And so they're not even properly staffed to to book these things out. And all of the bands that have not been touring that have been left in the lurch for all this time, and we're so lucky to be able to, to to live stream and to have such a devoted and loyal base of people that watch us stream and and, and support us that way, uh, that we were able to stay afloat. There's so many bands out there that are just making zero revenue all this time. Everybody is pressuring these venues to get in as soon as possible and as soon as possible. And it's a real testament to Kevin and uh, and to you, Troy, all the work you put in constantly not knowing if and when these shows were going to happen. But booking them anyway was really important. We have canceled so many booked shows in 2021. We were booked starting in January. We yep. had shows just as if there would be no COVID. We didn't just say, ah, it'll be unsafe. Don't book them. We, we had to stay competitive in the market and get our names in there. And then we, if it was unsafe, we could just cancel. It's fine. Uh, so now we're at a, at a spot where between DC and Atlanta, I mean, pick a date. You would be the 15th hold on that date because everyone is now jamming into the same area and these venues don't even have the the people working to field the calls to book those things. So yeah. uh, it is it is a real tense market right now. And we're lucky to have the shows that we do have. But, uh, you know, I said it the other night, we have 12 shows currently booked for 2021. And I think of those shows, 11 of them will happen. And there's a chance all 12 will. But yeah, we have already canceled some. Obviously, we announced yesterday, DC, uh, we're doing July 17th uh, back at the Miracle Theater. Um, Brennan, go ahead and drop those... Uh, 
the link to those tickets in chat and then for the other shows as well that I'm going to talk about. VIP for that sold out really, really fast. So going back to Kayvon's original question, are they selling out faster? I think especially with the announcement about uh, the CDC and masks, people are like, let's go. So DC is selling out very fast. And then uh, we're coming to Atlanta for Dragon Con September 2nd and 3rd, back-to-back -back nights. What am I doing to myself? My birthday's the next day, Joe. That's gonna be that's gonna be a hell of a week. And then two weeks later, we're gonna be in Indianapolis doing two more shows, the sixteenth and the eighteenth of September. And I'm not gonna say what cities, but two weeks later we have two more shows booked. Uh, that uh, once they say you're ready to go, we're gonna put those on the books. And then we have a shows in October, shows in November, and then shows all the way in December. So uh, yeah, hope people if if you feel safe, if you're vaccinated, uh, Buy tickets and come, come see us and, and come support us because uh, we gotta, we're we're a small business like anybody else. We need asses in those seats, and it's good for the venues too that have been out of work forever. It really helps everybody if you can afford it. Western Spaghetti asks, "I'm super excited for all the new stuff coming out, but what makes you two the the most nervous about all the new things coming up?" It's a very good question. Most nervous. I'll, I'll just, answer. Yeah, I'll yours answer for me. Man. Glass Cannon Con. <laughs> it's it's going to kill me. I'm going to have white hair uh, by by the time this thing goes off. Uh, if it ever goes off. If it ever goes off. Uh, I, you want to see just... arguments between us? Just tune into any of our Glass Cannon Con meetings. Yeah, that actually, you know, it's so funny. I didn't mention it on fodder. And I think it's only because there's nothing else to say at the moment. But I mean, I didn't even type it because I'm just like, I'm not talking to Troy about that right now. Um, yeah, it's it's that's a big that's a big undertaking. And so, yeah, that that's to me. I'm the most nervous about that. I don't think I'm nervous about anything else we announced. Uh, there's some aspects of GCP 2.0 that I can't talk about that I'm nervous about, but, but other than that, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, you know, it's all, it's all business, business and stuff. Yeah. All my nerves and I don't even think it's the right word is, is all surrounds GCP 2.0 because there's just so much work yeah. that I'm doing beyond like normal GM prep. You know, I'm, I'm meeting with my buddy Dave Kang every single week and now it's getting to the point two times a week and now we're going to start meeting with the writer of chapter one Jason Bullman uh once in a while and getting getting that the actual pen to paper so I, I have nerves about that with all the other stuff we're going on and then the production I want the production to be slick you look at our, our early live shows that we did in the studio where we just put curtains up and stuff you know like I want it to look good and that's going to require a lot of time a lot of money a new set uh you know, tons of people in the studio running several different cameras and audio equipment producers. Like there's just a lot of other stuff that goes into this. And then like, I want to publish this someday. So we got to get artwork for this. We got to get maps. Like when I start really thinking about what GCP 2.0 is going to entail, like it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's nerve wracking. It's daunting, but it's, it's, it's a nerves that's based on excitement. Like how, how cool that we get to do this, but I want it to be perfect. Uh, Kafor Slick asks, Troy, you want people to be able to watch your live stream, but it's really hard to watch them live when I am in, I just lost it, when I am living in Sweet. Sweden. Do you I guys think that. about this when you decide when you stream? Well, you know, that's like asking Saturday Night Live to like, you should really do a Saturday afternoon show. You know what I mean? Like, that's what reruns are for. We're, we're doing what, I think it's just a, a model that's gone on forever. It's like, you play prime time in the area that you're at, and then everybody else can watch it when they can watch it. The difference is we have so many international fans, and they, they're sleeping when their shows are on. So I think what we could do is, uh, you know, work towards having replays air at more international friendly times. So if this show airs and i'm just we haven't locked in scheduling yet let's say it airs monday nights at 8 p.m eastern right uh everybody in the u.s can watch it um and then maybe do a rerun three days later on twitch um but like during or the, the day. next day you know yeah. what i mean like or the next day at uh 2 p.m eastern you know right. what i mean like to, so that it's prime time in sweden in the uk etc right around prime time sweden uk and make a big um, deal about the replay in that like people will watch in chat. So you still get that chat experience and maybe we're in the chat or a couple of us are in the chat. Make it so that like, if you really can't go, you're still part of an experience. You know what I mean? Like if you don't watch a show, you DVR it, you can watch it later. Um, with, with this, you're missing out on all that original chat with the thousands that will be watching it for the first time. But I think it could be fun if we made a big deal, like we're doing a, a, a replay every week, Saturday afternoon or something. And then we show up in the chat and, Everyone knows, like, well, I got to watch the replay because 
some people just just hang out and chat and don't even watch the show. Uh, Arabs GCP asks, what reaction, negative or positive, to the state of the nation has most stuck out to you guys? I think it's from, for me, it's the expanded cast of GCP 2.0 really stuck out to me, particularly the, the concerns about game flow. Um, yeah. That really stuck out to me because that was my debate. <laughs> like, we talked about this at, at length. Uh, and I was like, oh, man, people are all over this. Like, they know it's not just for shows. It's also home games. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's tougher with more players. And, and I get that. Um, but, you know, in the end, we, we went the way we went. But that, that reaction, there's a lot of negative reactions to that, which uh, I expected, but maybe didn't expect quite as much. Yeah. You know, when we talked at length, do we just leave it with the five of us? And, uh, you know, we just all decided, no, we think it's going to be a better show with more people. And uh it's tough. I, I, I guess I wasn't surprised, but yeah, I think that was the one. Is that the one that really stuck out? You know, the switch, I knew the switch to 2E was going to, we didn't even talk about that, was going to ruffle people's feathers. But like, to me, that's the most obvious move. Um, that wasn't yeah, surprising. Yeah, I, th I thought it was obvious. I mean, I certainly understand from an Edition Wars standpoint, like there's always going to be people that just want you to play 1e that don't like 2e and I, and I get that uh and it's not that it's so obvious like why would we even consider playing 1e it's it's really it's less about the game and more about the the um you know the support of the system you know yeah. the, the, paizo is moving forward with that we are moving forward with paizo as a partner and we, you know we gotta hang with them you know what i mean we love paizo they love yeah. us it's a great relationship we can't keep living in the past man now are we still going to play 1E shows? Yeah. For years to come. Yeah. But and to like, be clear, like if we went to Pies and we're like, you know what? We really want to do Tyrant's Grasp. They'd be like, all right, good luck. You know what I mean? Like there, it wasn't a, you guys need to do, because I think a lot of people think like they, the Pies have told them they had to do 2E or it's, you know, or like they're not going to get the same support if they don't do 2 It's not the case. Like this was wholly our decision. And I made this decision a long time ago that we were going to make the switch to 2E. It's just. Yeah. And let me, let me clarify. When I say support, I don't mean like they're, they've got our back. They would have our back regardless. When I say yeah. support, I mean product support. I mean, there is new and innovative stuff being released about the game we're playing that we can inject into our game that we can talk yeah. about we can add new classes you know somebody dies your backup character could be a class that was just released uh you know that kind of stuff is it just doesn't exist in 1e and we have played so much 1e so this is going to be a, a chance for some no, uh, novel content i guess you could say um jason sansbury says uh question are all the proceeds from pride month sales going to lgbtqia plus organizations and charities Somebody asked that on the stream too. You know, this is a complicated question. Part of me is like, well, deficits are big. We're doing something nice. But at the same time, like this isn't about like using uh, pride to try and make money. We just, there's a lot of uh, like vagaries of margins and what we're ordering. We can't lose $5,000 in order to give 2000 So we just have to make sure that the numbers worked out based on like how many we ordered. Uh, our, our plan is to is to really uh, help out a, what we think is a great organization. And so uh, we're trying to do that. Our focus isn't on profit. We don't have a, a number. Do you have a number, Joe? Have you worked out the percentage? No. Uh, no. But just like we did for direct relief, like it's not, we didn't make any money on those masks. I don't think we made any money on those masks. And if we did, we it's did. like- We made a little bit. We um, made a little bit, but we put it back into like making the Linus mask, you know? And so yeah, likewise, we, much, yeah. we would want to, we'd want to make enough money so that we could buy more pride merch. You know, it's, it's complicated. Our goal is not profit. Our goal is to uh, see a sea of these hats out there to let people know that uh, Glass Cannon Nation are allies of the community and to uh, give to what I think is a, a and I'm, everybody knows the Trevor Project, just a phenomenal organization i hope that answers the question i feel like i answered that the other night so maybe i'm not trying to be vague because it's like well, we're we're secretly keeping 10 percent for our pocket and the boat that i want to buy no it's just about making sure that the the math works out correctly so that we can keep doing things like this murtok the magnificent asks joe are you playing in getting the trunk season three murtok yes do we not just go over future casting we don't talk about it we don't but yes <laughs> uh yeah i really can't see uh, an eventuality where i don't play in it uh, <laughs> uh i'm i'm excited and i'm also nervous uh, at the prospect um 
Do, 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 do. Let's see. Do, 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 Sorry, do, 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 I had one and then I lost it. Um, oh, jeez. A lot of these are funny questions. You guys are so clever. Uh, Get to the hard, meaty ones. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, what's up, Todd? Todd one out asks, hey, are you guys... Uh, how are you guys going with getting your heads around all the new game systems? The streams seem flawless, but I, as a mere mortal, would struggle to keep track of what dice system I was playing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. It's tricky. It's tough, but fun to, for me. It's like fun tough to be like, wait, which mechanic is that from which system? Uh, I just love digging into mechanics of new systems and different systems, and, and uh, for good or bad. We were just having a meeting this week with a publisher who... I'm not going to reveal here for various reasons, but uh, a major publisher. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the things their marketing person said in the meeting was, uh, we don't give two shits if you get the rules wrong in like the premiere of this game that they're, you know, they want us to like be, be a part of. They're just like, just have fun. That is the most important thing. It's like, we just want to have everybody have fun. We don't care if anybody plays the game with the rules wrong. That, that's not what it's about. It's about getting together with your friends and having fun. And that was just re refreshing to hear that from the marketing uh, PR person of a publisher that is, you know, pretty major, uh, global. And, you know, it's just like, that's good to know. And so, yeah, I don't get nervous about flubbing up rules that much uh, in the stuff that we play. I just want to make sure that, uh, that you know, we do our best to get it right, but that we're having fun. That's, that's really the main thing. Yeah, you know, we do the best that we can. I think that this is how, uh, what a great way to learn to just do a show uh, in front of people and like then find out later, like, oh, that's, oh, that's how that works. All right, great. Well, when we definitely play this show again, we'll hopefully uh, remember that. But like the rules are, uh, we, when, whenever a show ends, whatever rules we got right or we got wrong, like that's, that's the game. You know what I mean? It, there's something happened on Giant Slayer this week where people are like, oh, well, now there's an asterisk to this whole fight. And like that's, once you leave the table, that's that's it. That's that's what happened. Uh, and so, I don't know. I feel like it's the same way with these new games. We do the best we can, and we get better, hopefully, as we continue to play them. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Todd, <laughs> let's see what Troy has to say about this. Todd's good at these. Uh, with, with the new show structures, will there be new slash modified Patreon tiers or rewards? Follow up. Can I start naming stuff in the new GCP world? <laughs> I knew, I, I knew just from your tone that that was going to be the question. Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I mean, um, we'd, we'd probably crush with that $25 tier or a new $50 tier of subscriptions where it's like, you name something and it will be put in the world. Uh, just, just don't touch my world. Get out of my world. <laughs> yeah, get out of my world. Not to mention, and look, I love it. I would do it in a heartbeat. I think it's a great idea. But <laughs> I also like have to uh, go to whoever that is. And let's say that these are dozens and dozens and dozens of people. Uh, and I have to have all of them sign paperwork. You know what I mean? That says they will never, ever, no matter how successful that is, no matter if that, that city is the setting of a television show five years from now because it was such an amazing name that now we're making millions off of that name. <laughs> I can't have you be like, knock, knock, knock. Can I get a cut of that, bro? Like, it's, it, it, you have to sign it. So I don't even want to do the paperwork for that. It's a nightmare. We, ha we have to tell this to Skid because he's so nice. Skid will get emails all the time and he'll just like start naming stuff off of a fan recommendation because he's so kind and then we will get sued. <laughs> so, get it for listening we can't do yeah. it yeah and and by the way let me just say i believe that every single one of you particularly uh the amazing crew that comes in here week in and week out and watches the fod live i don't expect anybody to do this but that's not the point of legal shit when you get into legal shit what you think might happen or what probably is going to happen doesn't matter it's all worst case scenario talk and it's all let's look at the worst dregs of humanity and think about what they would do. That's all you think about when you're uh, in my position. It's terrible. Um, uh, this is a good question. TD Beck 13 asks, if, uh, if I use my Patreon coupon on the Pride merch, does money still get donated to the Trevor Project? That's a good question. That's I our think intention. May, I think so. maybe not. Well, so, I mean, we would have to that. track it 
very precisely. And we don't do any of the tracking for that. Uh, the, well, we'll know, just figure it out. Red if Star for some does. reason uh, that isn't the case, then we'll just make sure that it gets there. You know, yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot of people that use their Patreon coupons in the merch store. They hold yeah. on to them, waiting for a specific thing to drop. So we just got to communicate that with Red Star. So yeah, our intention is for that to work. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. We'll make sure that that uh, is the case. Woken Click asks: Speaking of Blades in the Dark, will this be a whole new show, or should I start catching up on the previous episodes now? Whole new show. Uh, you know, the plan right now is Duskfall because they've created uh, John Harper has created this amazing amazing universe with which to play in um but uh yeah a whole new show at least that's the plan i i wasn't where i'm where i am a tin whistle i don't think it would just be a little too meta if like there's a crew that i'm on out there in this world that we've created so i think we'll start our own thing also because the way i think is like this is a show that will be on the network for 10 years and so i want it to start uh with its own thing and have it evolve in its own universe that is dusk of all of it adjacent but not necessarily blood and blades adjacent uh, Trickster Coyote uh, asks, "This isn't my biggest concern." Oh, here we go. Here we go. But I've here seen a lot. But I've seen a lot of doubts. Are you asking for a friend, Trickster? It sounds like he's asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, he or she, they. Uh, but I've seen a lot of doubts about partners' audio quality. Will there be a minimum standard of audio quality for new affiliates post-pandemic? Very good question. And uh, yeah, we, we've we've dealt with some of that. We've talked about that with uh, definitely the shows that you saw mentioned in the uh, in the state of the niche um, that is being addressed. Yes, uh, we are very concerned about audio quality of everybody that we work with and uh, everybody that we work with is at least so far, has been adamant to uh, be supportive and help us uh, in that regard. Uh, it's just that some people just don't have the same understanding of audio that we do uh, or the same, um, I don't want to say standards because that makes it sound bad, but it, it just, uh, we're obsessive about this shit because we're audio file geeks, you know, and uh, Grant and I particularly, we're just obsessed with it. And so um, getting that up to snuff is definitely a goal of ours. And I think that, that you're going to see more of that uh, with the different affiliates as we get deeper into 2021 and into 2022. Um, the mediocre, up, buddy. Sorry. the mediocre Gatsby, any thoughts about going back to physical maps for streaming? There's a lot of room for production value in map making. Mm, I don't think so. You know, I, I've thought a lot about maps lately, actually, because I was procrastinating doing any actual writing and I was like, what do I do the maps? And so I started Googling and that, you know, I've been playing around with foundry uh, that everybody's so high on. I, it's fine. I don't think it's like, ah, finally, I've got a cure to what I don't like about Roll20. Um, this thing's about I actually don't like at all. Um, but I think that's going to be true of any virtual tabletop I ever play. So this is a big thing. Like, or, or do we, we partner with Dwarven Forge and do have like someone just running a Dwarven Forge? You know, I don't know. I want it to look awesome and hand drawn. I do pretty good maps. I, have, I miss doing those. Uh, I used to like, before you guys came over on Sunday, I'd be drawing all the maps in my apartment. I do miss doing those, but it just it looks shitty. Uh, I remember recordings where we had to stop mid-recording, mid be in the middle of a recording, and you'd be like, and pause. And then you'd be like, I got to go in the back room and draw a map because I didn't know you were going to go here. And yeah. so you'd go into your back room and we'd just like hang out for 15 minutes while you drew a map and then you'd come walking it back out. We'd move all the mics again. You would set it down. And, and I also don't like covering up pieces of the map and unveiling them because I think like Grant will meta game where the map is. And so like I was drawing them during the session when I had the That's mic. That's right. That's you, right. You'd open a door and you wouldn't know. And so then I'd draw the square and I'd you know, throw some accoutrements in there. But like... There's yeah, definitely know. more editing then. There's more audio editing then. Yeah, yeah. Editing is a breeze now, thanks to SideQuest Side Sesh. Like, we got so in the zone. These GCP episodes, uh, I find they're they're a lot easier. I don't know if you're finding that with uh, Raiders. Joe does Raiders. I do GCP. But uh, GCP is so smooth now. I do, like, five or six cuts of just, like, dead air or a Matthew joke. <laughs> Uh, Losar Games X asks Troy, who is your favorite shark on Shark Tank and who is your least favorite? Oh, I like them all. Mark Cuban's probably my favorite, but I also like Mr. Wonderful because he's just an asshole. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a least favorite. They're, they're all great. I, I literally, Joe, I watch, I don't know why I started watching it like six months ago and now at eight o'clock I throw it on and I leave it on until I go to bed at, you know, between 11 and 12. It's the only thing that I actually, uh, watch. 
Um, I watch a lot of it. I enjoy it. I like seeing deals. I'm ready to make some deals, Joe. <laughs> All right. Two questions and then we're done. Sorry to everybody we didn't get to, but we'll wrap up on these two. Tej A asks, uh, will GCP 2.0 feel, in quotes, or be structured like a full AP? You mentioned the writer of book one. Does that mean you have X amount of books in mind, for instance? Uh, I don't know how much I want to talk about this, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, no, it will not be structured like a traditional adventure path. The, the sort of six book uh, tradition. And when I say traditional, like like a Paizo adventure path, we're thinking something a little bit different. Uh, it's not going to be, our plan isn't for it to be a six hour, a six hour, a six year show like Giant Slayer, um, you know. That's that's all I want to say about it. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be structured differently, but hopefully, eventually, it can be released as like a beautiful hardcover. Uh, wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Uh, all right, last question. Razmatong asks. Oh yeah, Troy, you said. Troy said the RSS feed only allows for 300 episodes at a time, but also that the GCP may go over 300 eps before finishing. Is the feed going to be split once it surpasses 300? Does that worry you? So excited for everything you put out. Yeah, I think I I talked about this in the stream, or right? I remember talking about it. But yeah, uh, it sucks. It's, there's no way around it. But like we we need to accomplish two things. We need to make sure that our current feed retains all of the subscribers that it has, because we've worked so hard to get that. Like you know, we're talking about how these feeds, if they had a monetary value, this is like our most valuable thing is our giant slayer feed. Um, so we need to make sure that the new episodes of both giant slayer and the future show get on that feed. But after 300 episode one of glass cannon's gone episode two. So we're going to have to like yesterday, this is some the project that I need to be working on. I have to move the, you know, the, the, the beginning episodes to a separate feed so that eventually people will be able to consume our original show as well as our new show. And, uh, it gives me fits. Like, why can't you just put more f fucking apps on a feed? It doesn't make any sense. None. No sense. <laughs> None. Maybe no it's just sense. an Apple problem, in which case, I don't know. Does Spotify do more than 300 or? I think so. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I think it it's just an Apple problem, I think. Yeah, that's a big problem, though. Whether you're an Apple person or not, I think their podcast app is not as great as it used to be. Um, yeah, but uh, I've said to you many times, nobody, nobody cares because almost nobody does what we do. Uh, and by the way, there are tons of people that do what we do. But in the scheme of all podcasting, right. people don't do 300 episode serial stories where you right. have to start from episode one and it continues to episode 300. They do interviews. They do one-off shows. They do arcs. They do whatever. You know what I mean? And it's just like you don't have to listen to them all to get the whole story. So it is a weird position. I don't know why, where that number 300 came from, if it was just a bandwidth thing. But one of the things we've learned uh, in over the last couple of years in our deeper research is that it costs nothing to host audio anymore. It costs nothing. So it's yeah. just like in the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, compressed audio. So like, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to hold thousands on a single feed. It just, it, there's, we're there, we're already there. Uh, you know, to talk about Giant Slayer this week, I mean, Grant's whole thing at the beginning about the, the way tech is going and the way things are gonna be, you know, it's gonna be mind blowing some of the shit that's coming. And one thing that's already there is is audio hosting. It's it's right. easy to host that much audio and so especially an to route it through. It's an Apple I believe problem. so. Yeah, I which is, so. but that's worth considering. We have to f figure that out. Yeah, uh, but Apple's Apple's a big deal, uh, yeah. and we have talked about it, uh, but we haven't come to a consensus yet. So we're going to keep working on it. But uh, that's going to do it for this this one. I mean, a good chunky ninety minute oh, fod uh, state of the nation recap. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and for uh, chilling with us. Uh, we are. What am I? Oh, so we got ANA live tonight. We got Fiasco episode two is next week. Um, uh, Giant Slayer. Oh my God. GCP next week. Uh, can't wait for you guys to hear that. And then, uh, oh, next week, special guest, one week heading in before PaizoCon. Eric Mona is joining me here next week to talk PaizoCon uh, at all, uh, Star Trek, all that good stuff. So uh, I'm ex very excited to have him on the FOD. Tune in next week for a little, uh, get your get your questions out to Eric Mona. Um, that's going to do it this time. Troy, thanks for doing two weeks in a row. Sorry to, sorry to bother you. Now I'm good till August. <laughs> See you in August. Sign him up. See you in August. <laughs> All right, take it easy, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.